Welcome to the solution to the 2022 AP Statistics FRQ exam question number one. In this video, we're going to fully explain this problem. And down the bottom there, this was a problem dealing with least squares regression analysis. So when I make these videos, you can always look down there if you want a little quick blurb about what that particular question was all about. But let's dive right into it. So here was the question. A biologist gathered data on the length in millimeters and the mass in grams for 11 bullfrogs. The data are shown in plot one. There it is. Gorgeous, beautiful data. Based on the scatter plot, describe the relationship between mass and length in context. All right. When you are asked to describe a relationship that you see in a scatter plot, you're looking for four key things. Now, you probably are going to learn three in class. One, you want to talk about the direction positive or negative, this is clearly positive. As the length goes up, mass goes up. So definitely positive here. We also want to look at the form. Is it forming a, a line, a curve, a parabola, exponential increase, exponential decrease, all that fun stuff. Here, I mean, listen, anytime you have a scatter plot, you're never going to see a perfectly clear form. So don't expect that, but we definitely see a linear pattern here. Now remember what linear means is that it's going up or down at a constant rate. Never going to be perfect, but we definitely see a linear pattern forming through this data. As the length goes up, the mass seems to be going up at a constant rate. And the third thing we want to look for is strength. And here we're looking for how, how, you know, how accurate these points are to that line, right? How closely do they make that direction and that form come through? And other than maybe this point right here that's a little bit off, we do see a fairly strong relationship. It's not like they're scattered all over the place. If you could clearly tell me it's positive and you could clearly tell me that it's linear, then it's got to be pretty strong. That's going to be a correlation value fairly close to positive one in this case. Now, the fourth thing that I always like to make sure I tell students to have when you're asked to describe this is context. Make sure that you don't just say positive, linear, strong. There's no context in that. So maybe give a little blurb telling me exactly what's happening in terms of bullfrogs here. So here is my beautiful example sentence. The relationship between the length of mass, the length and mass, look at this typo there, the, the relationship between the length and mass of these 11 bullfrogs appears to be, here it comes, positive, there's my direction, linear, there's my form, and fairly strong, there's my strength. But notice, I didn't just say these three words, right? I started off with answering the question. Keep this in mind anytime you're working on the AP test. They ask you a question. Answer the question in that context. So describe the relationship between the length and mass of a frog. Well, the relationship between the length and the mass of these 11 bullfrogs appears to be positive, linear, and strong. Now, here comes my context. As the length in millimeters of these bullfrogs increase, there is a tendency for the mass to increase as well at a constant rate. Having this at a constant rate is actually really, really important because that's emphasizing the fact that it's linear. Because an exponential curve increases as well, but it doesn't increase at a constant rate. It increases at an increasing rate. But that's exponential. We're definitely not that. We're linear, which means that we're increasing at a constant rate. So it's actually really important that you have that. Other key things we like to see here is don't say that, you know, for all bullfrogs. Make sure that your statement doesn't say all bullfrogs have relationship that's positive when you're strong. We actually don't know that. All we know is what we're looking at, and that is relationship between these 11 bullfrogs. So make sure you emphasize that as well in your answer. All right, hopefully a pretty simple answer there and one that you could definitely ace. All right. The next section says, from the data, the biologists calculated the least squares regression line. That's our line of best fit, right? Our perfect line used for predicting mass from length. So you take the X, that's the length, and you make a prediction for the mass. The least squares regression line is shown in plot two, and it's also given right here. Now remember, in statistics, we have a least squares regression line that is of the form A plus BX. So keep that in mind. We typically put the X, the variable, at the end, which is what they did right here, length. All right, so it wants us to identify the slope of the least squares regression line in context. Identify and interpret. So first we're going to identify, that's my B value, which is what's being multiplied at the back. So that's the 6.086. That's half the battle is just making sure that we identify the proper value. Now we have to interpret it. So here's my hint to interpreting slope. Always make it a fraction. Even if it's a decimal, you can make it a fraction by putting it over one. 
And think about slope back from maybe algebra. Slope is always changing your y's over changing your x. So keep in mind y's on top, x is on the bottom. Then we got to also include units. The x is the length. There's the context in millimeters. And the y is the mass, and that is in grams. Now, if I just do a little bit of, you know, specifying there what these numbers are, the interpretation would be pretty easy. For every one millimeter that the length gets longer for these bullfrogs, we predict that the mass will increase by 6.086 grams. So for every one length in millimeters, we predict 6.086 mass in grams. Easy. All right, the next part here wants us to interpret the coefficient of determination for the least squared regression line, which is, of course, r squared. First, r squared is always changed into a percentage, so that's the 81.9%. And, you know, don't want to make a, a, you know, really explaining what the coefficient determination is could take, a, you know, half an hour video. But in a nutshell, it's basically saying, hey, we got these two variables, right? If we look at this scatter plot, we got a bunch of different masses and a bunch of different lengths. And 81.9% of those different masses are actually because of those different lengths. Easy, right? Okay, so I did type up those answers so you can actually see them really nicely here. So I have three different versions for slope because, you know, everybody wants to write a little bit different way here. All are correct. So the slope first is, gosh, another typo there. I need to proofread these. The slope is 6.086. You got to identify it. It did say to identify it, so make sure you do that first. And now we have to interpret. So as the length of a bullfrog increases by one millimeter, the mass is predicted to increase by 6.086 grams. Make sure you have that word predicted or estimated there because that's an important part of a least squares regression line is that it, def it definitely just makes predictions. It doesn't guarantee anything. Here's another interpretation. On average, as the length of a bullfrog increases by one millimeter, the mass increases by 6.086 grams. So we have the fact that it says on average there, which means it's not always going to be 6.086. It's just a prediction. And one more actually just takes my first sentence and reverses it. The mass of a bullfrog is predicted to increase by 6.086 grams for each increase in one millimeter of length. So a couple different ways you can interpret that slope. Easy, easy, easy. But the number one error kids have is that they mix up X and Y. So like I said, make it a fraction. And then remember, slope is Y over X. And then you can't mess up. The one is the X, that's millimeters in length. The Y is the mass, that's 6.086 grams of mass. All right, now for interpreting R squared, which again is that percentage, 81.9% of the variation in the mass of a bullfrog in this sample is explained by the variation in length of a bullfrog. So again, it's important that you understand that, that word variation is in there twice, because again, we got a bunch of different masses, a bunch of different lengths. They're not all going to be perfectly matched up. And, you know, it's not always going to be exactly a relationship that we see like, hey, one millimeter means 6.86 grams. It's just an average. It's just a prediction. But here we're actually saying how connected these two variables are. The differences in the mass are actually because of the differences in the length. And that's where the 81.9% comes in. All right. Two more parts here. Well, one more part that has two parts to it. <laughs> All right, from plot two, consider the residuals of the 11 bullfrogs. All right, now we got to remember what a residual is. A residual is the vertical up and down difference between an actual point and its predicted value from the equation. So it wants us to actually look at the residuals and to approximate the length and mass of the bullfrog with the largest absolute value residual. So what that means is whether it be a positive or a negative residual, which one has the largest regardless if it's positive or negative. So here we're going to look at the vertical distances. So here, look at that very close. We're just, the actual is just a little bit over predicted. Um, all of these results, I checked, like to draw them all in there. And positive are the ones that are above the line. Negative are the ones that are below it. So which residual, which vertical distance is the longest? Bingo, right here. Hopefully you agree with me on that one. So it is negative, okay? But it, again, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's just the biggest one, whether it be positive or negative. So if we're looking at that point right there, let me emphasize it in red. Let me make it stand out a little bit more. They do want me to find the length and mass. The length, again, you have to do a little bit of eyeballing here. So maybe around 161 
millimeters, all right? No one's going to be mad at you if you're off, you know, 161, 162. You can even make up a decimal if you want, 161.9. It, it, it doesn't matter, but it definitely looks like it's, you know, if I put a mark right here at 165, it's definitely between 160 and 165. All right, what about the mass? Well, the mass actually looks to be pretty much right on that line for 350. At the end of the day, it could be like 349.5 or 350.6. I, I don't know that, obviously, without knowing the actual data, but I think making an approximation of 350 grams is pretty darn accurate there. So don't forget length and mass for that bullfrog. All right, then the final question says, does the least squares regression line over or underestimate the mass of this bullfrog that we just identified in the previous part? So what happens is, is remember the line is what's making predictions. So the line is higher than what actually happened. So the least squares regression line overestimated the mass. It was definitely an overestimate. Okay, because the prediction looks to be, and eh, we could estimate maybe around uh, 425. Again, it's hard to make an exact answer there, but the, the estimate was around 425 grams, but the actual weight of that bullfrog was 350 grams. So it does want us to explain. Make sure you always read that. If it says explain, it wants a couple more sentences here. So my estimation would be it was an overestimate because the actual weight of the bullfrog was lower than what was predicted, or you could switch that around. The prediction was around 425 grams, whereas the actual weight of that bullfrog was only 350 grams. So again, you're just describing the fact that the actual was below predicted or the predictive was above the actual. But regardless, based on how the question was worded, does the least squares regression line over or underestimate the mass? Definitely an overestimate because the line was above the point. All right, that's it for question number one for the 2022 AP exam. Hopefully I explained it well. If you have any further questions, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe.